Hey, this is Dr. Cole here, and in today's video, we are overviewing one of my favorite lab tests to run uh, on new clients when we work with them in our functional medicine coaching programs. And this test is called a GI MAP test. It's from the lab Diagnostic Solutions. And uh, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know, I I'm really big on getting to the root cause. And, and in a lot of these videos, the common theme is that we have to heal the gut first before anything downstream is going to begin to improve. So this isn't anything new, it's nothing new I've come up with. 2,000 years ago, the father of medicine, Hippocrates, said all disease begins in our gut. Well look, if all disease begins there, then all health begins there too. And we're beginning to understand so much more about uh, our gut, what leaky gut is, the, the importance of having a healthy GI tract lining, and also what's called your microbiome, meaning that that's a name for all the bacteria and viruses and fungi that are supposed to be healthy and living in harmony uh, inside of your gut. And, and they, they also influence so many aspects of our health today too. So, I mean, even if we just think about this conceptually, if we want to improve the health of our body, if you wanna build new brain tissue, if you wanna build a new heart tissue, if you wanna build new cells, where does all the material come to make these body parts? You get a brand new body every year. Every single cell in your body replicates itself each year. And where does all that material come from? Well, hopefully it, it comes from the healthy foods that we're eating, right? So we eat healthy foods to promote new healthy cell growth. Well, where does that food have to go? What system does that food have to go and enter within? It has to go in our GI tract. And so uh, your, your, it starts in your mouth and then your stomach and your small intestine. The food has to get broken down and then assimilated and, pre and packaged into the right vitamins and minerals where it then goes into your bloodstream and it travels all throughout your body for nutrients and, and to the building blocks to make the new tissues in our body. So literally, not just all disease begins in the gut, but all health begins there too. And if that system's not working correctly, not only are you gonna have symptoms show up as, as far as like outright GI type symptoms like bloating or acid reflux or IBS or uh, diarrhea, constipation, diagnoses like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis. I mean, the, those outright GI based illnesses, of course, are gonna be symptoms that something's majorly wrong with the GI tract. But other things that you might not always relate to gut problems like uh, poor energy, chronic fatigue, oh, and never, never sleeping well. Um, brain fog, living in chronic pain, allergies, asthma. I mean, there are so many other things that we might not put the label of gut disease on these issues, but they all have their roots, again, back in our GI tract here. So uh, this test is extremely important to run. In the past, I've used other labs. Um, you know, they had great results with those things too. But there's a reason why we switched over to this one. Uh, number one, the difference between this and a lot of the other labs is the amount of different pathogens and the amount of even healthy organisms in your gut that this lab uh, investigates. It's also not just a microscopic examination of the stool, because so this is like a one day stool sample that you do. So not the most fun test to do in the world, but it, it's worth doing because it gives us so much information. But it's not just like a microscopic exam. This is looking for the DNA presence of these things in our stool. And it's extremely accurate and extremely sensitive test too uh, to show you know, the, not just is something present or not, but to what level is it present in your gut too. Um, some of the old things we used to use, some of the old labs I used to use were very um, cumbersome. You know, It would require four stool samples over the course of two days. So you needed a lot of material, not a fun test to do, uh, especially multiple days in a row. So hey, this thing only requires one stool sample. And um, the other thing, we get results back a lot faster. It used to take two to three weeks. Now it's seven to 10 days. So just the, all the reasons in the world for why we switched over to using this lab. And I couldn't be happier with the results. So uh, my goal for today is we're just gonna go through a sample copy here and I wanna show you some of the things that we're looking at. And then not just um, what, the, what the test, the, the results of the test, not just what they send us back. But I wanna also show you their interpretive guide. This company, Diagnostic Solutions, they have gone just above and beyond with not just showing you the results of what's found in your stool or in your gut, um, but what to do about that too. So you get a 40 page uh, interpretive guide that comes with every sample that will show us, if I just scroll down to some of these things that we'll look at here, like um, E. coli, for example, you know, who hasn't heard of that before? So what this will do is it will show you the epidemiology, like this is the most common cause of traveler's diarrhea. 
um, but it will also show, also show you the clinical impl implications. And then the, what I love most is the therapeutic approaches and considerations. So not just what do you have, how may have you gotten this, and what is it doing to your body, but what are some things diet-wise, supplement-wise, or maybe even medical intervention-wise that we can do about addressing this too. So uh, I love the guide that it gets uh, that it gives you for this because anything that's come that comes up positive in your test, you now have a resource where you can go and read this and see what is what is possibly doing to your body, and then different therapeutic approaches we can do to address this naturally, or in some cases if it's a serious enough infection, um, even going the, the medical route with this too. So it's something we can take to our to our doctor. Um, if we go to the sample report itself, I just want to go over some of the highlights of what's found in this test and why we run this here. So I'm um, starting at the top and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so we can see this better. Um, so starting at the top here, pathogens, and you see under this first blue bar, bacterial pathogens. So this whole list are bacterial pathogens that are abnormal growths in the gut that can drive uh, disease. So a pathogen means it's a harmful or infectious type agent that can drive disease in your gut that can manifest in a variety of ways or silently. You know, some of these things don't always, are not always gonna give you diarrhea or constipation or acid reflux or IBS, though often they do, um, but sometimes the presence of these things can even be occurring silently, but be, be like a major tax on your immune system or, or, or cause other issues that we might not always relate back to the gut like we discussed here. So um, we're looking at any, anything that's overgrown here is abnormal. So we don't wanna see anything in the results section here like you see in the red for the sample report. If this shows up as high, it means that there's an overgrowth of some pathogenic bacteria culture growing in our gut. Um, parasite pathogens, uh, viral pathogens to look for, so various viruses like the norovirus, adenovirus, there's some additional ones in the pages to follow here. Um, H. pylori type infections, that's a very big one that none of the previous stool tests I ran would ever uh, research before, H. pylori infections. So um, that's very important to look at. Normal bacteria flora. So flora is a word for the healthy bacteria cultures that grow in your gut. Understand in your colon, you do want the right types of bacteria. We don't wanna have any bacteria there. Like, like it shouldn't be like bacteria free. You do want bacteria there, it's necessary for you but we need the right types. And so um, this will show if you have enough of the normal or expected beneficial flora. And these things are so important for creating like short chain fatty acids, which are the nutrients that the cells in your colon need. If you have colitis, if there's like inflammation in the gut, you're probably not getting enough short chain fatty acids produced by these guys here. Um, these healthy bacteria produce neurotransmitters for your brain. So like serotonin and dopamine, the things we need to feel good and to feel happy, are produced by the bacteria in our gut. These bacteria influence how your cells function, they influence um, inflammation levels in our body, they influence uh, I mean, what your immune system does. So there are so many important factors that, that we need to investigate. Do we have enough of the healthy bacteria? Because these regulate so many important processes in our body. Um, if we scroll down here, um, opportunistic bacteria. So these are not necessarily pathogenic, meaning they're not a harmful infectious type bacteria culture, but they are bacteria that should be living within the right ranges and not overgrowing their boundaries. So think about them as like weeds growing in your garden. They're not necessarily harmful unless they overgrow it or extend their boundaries and are, are growing to levels that they shouldn't be. Generally, that's the case when we don't have enough of the good guys, the healthy bacteria, keeping them at bay. Um, I love this for the potential autoimmune triggers. We see so many cases of autoimmune disease. In fact, that's the number one growing uh, subset of like chronic illnesses in America right now is autoimmune diseases. And there are bacteria cultures, like, like one that we see often, Citrobacter freyundi. There are bacteria cultures in your gut that can influence your immune system to react in a negative way, meaning overactive immune sensitivity where now your immune system's attacking cells in your body that it should be leaving alone. So uh, these potential autoimmune triggers are huge to investigate. Uh, fungal and yeast overgrowth. Most people, when they, when they hear like fungal overgrowth in the gut, they think candida, and that's true. That's the most common one. However, there are some additional fungal cultures that are important to look at. And anyone who's at risk for this is like people, anyone who's had like uh, multiple rounds of antibiotics throughout the course of their life antibiotics kill the good guys and the bad guys in your gut, bacteria-wise, 
leaving the, the door wide open for now fungal overgrowths to begin to occur because the healthy bacteria in your gut should be things that keep you know uh, the fungal levels the, the fungal growths at minimum levels Fu fungal growth are, are normal in your gut but they shouldn't overgrow their boundaries just like some of those opportunistic bacteria that we talked about here so if you have any overgrowth of yeast or fungus candida that's generally due because you don't have enough of the good guys and this test will show us if that's present uh, additional viruses like site like the cytomegalovirus or Epstein-Barr virus um, parasites not fun to talk about but parasites and worms and the eggs of these things are often found in stool samples or the DNA presence of these things too um, sometimes I'll see on blood work you know if someone have you are if you've ever had blood work done and you see a white blood cell marker called eosinophils elevated you know that can be a food sensitivity or it can also indicate a person who has parasites and so I often like to use this as a follow-up to lab work that, that blood work wise too to see you know if there's if there's immune system activation in the blood work does that have its roots in the gut so uh, parasites you know we don't I don't, don't want to make it sound like we see this all the time but absolutely they're present and worth investigating if you have chronic health issues um, worms additional intestinal health markers so um, if we look at some of these under this blue uh, bar here for the intestinal health markers um, things like elastase that's produced by your pancreas so when we think of digestion it's not always just uh, the, the the stomach and the small intestine and the colon but really how's your pancreas functioning is it releasing the right digestive enzymes to break down your food properly uh, GI markers like beta glucuronidase you know that's a marker that if that's elevated it means that after your liver has detoxified your body all night long that your body your body detoxes when it sleeps and it will package these toxins into packages and send them down into your colon and if this marker here beta glucuronidase is elevated it means that those those toxins are not being shunted out and, 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 and eliminated from your body but they're reabsorbing again so reabsorption reabsorption of toxins in the colon from people that have colitis or slow uh, bowel movement transit times is absolutely worth investigating um, it will look for occult blood in the stool sample, uh, immune responses like secretory IgA. Every mucosal tissue in your body releases uh, secretory IgA in the presence of inflammation or in the presence of something that's triggering to your immune system. Um, the best analogy I can give you for this is if you have seasonal allergies and your nose begins to run and your eyes begin to water, those are mucosal tissues releasing secretory IgA. And that occurs in your gut as well because your gut is made of soft, uh, soft muscle tissue as well. Um, smooth muscle tissue, I mean. Um, if we look at inflammation, uh, this is something called calprotectin. There's a difference between IBS and IBD. IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. And that might be a person who has you know, diarrhea and constipation, one or, the, one or the other or both. IBD stands for inflammatory bowel disease and so those are anyone who has that diagnosis is now at risk or may have already developed ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease and so it's worth investigating you know is this simply IBS is there something off about our digestion that's causing constipation or diarrhea or is it more serious is there some type of inflammatory bowel disease occurring in the gut and then finally most people have heard of the term uh, leaky gut syndrome before so leaky gut means that there are literal porous holes and openings in the small intestine and there's actually a lab marker you can run to evaluate if you have leaky gut or what's called a small intestine permeability and that's this final test down here called zonulin so um, if zonulin is present then it means that that's a protein that can we can measure to see if there's the presence of leaky gut uh, in your stool sample um, another thing I love for this is that um, it will show you um, gene resistance to various medications and specifically antibiotics. So, you know, all, all too often today, we are way over, prescript way over prescriptive of antibiotic use. You know, I think far too many people have had way too many rounds of antibiotics. And that's a major contributing factor to why we have so many resistant uh, bugs today and why they don't work for a large part of the population. And why so many people have just major GI uh, disruptions and disturbances too. So I'm not always huge on referring someone to a, to a medical doctor to get on an antibiotic unless it's absolutely necessary, which in some cases it is. So sometimes we'll, we'll send these test results over to a person's doctor and they might need to go get on a short-term antifungal 
or antibiotic to knock out some serious type of a gut infection if it's uh, more serious than we can just do with dietary or supplement or more natural means. So if that is the route that we have to take, then absolutely we want to know are there any bacteria or viruses or, or fungal overgrowths in the gut that are resistant to certain antibiotics because that is the case. So this will show not only what you're positive for, but it will show if those cultures are resistant to specific antibiotics so that you don't use that one unnecessarily and it will have no effect, no, no like positive effect on getting rid of that culture. It would only have a negative effect on the good cultures at that point. So we want to be specific about what your doctor is prescribing. And this gives them the best information so that they can make the best choice um, for any prescriptive agents at that point. So again, uh, this is a no brainer test to run. Um, I use it for nearly every patient that comes into our clinic now, along with the blood work that we run. Uh, this is, is quickly becoming you know, our most prescribed test here for a reason because it gives us so much information. So um, if we go back to you know, a little bit more about gut health and what causes disruptions and what can lead to infections for all these things, we talked about antibiotics. That's a major source for why people don't have enough of the good bacteria and don't have a healthy internal environment anymore, which leads to the bad guys beginning to overgrow. Pathogenic bacteria, opportunistic bacterial overgrowth, candida, viruses, worms, parasites, all these negative things occur in the gut because of our lifestyles and the things we do, the medications we take, the amount of antibiotics we use, the standard American diet with the processed grains and the poor fats and all the food additives that feed these bad guys and starve off the good guys. Uh, if we talk about um, you know, C-section births, one of the best, if you're watching this and you're a young mother or you're thinking about having kids or maybe you're a grandparent and you have grandkids, you know, one of the best things you can do to form a healthy gut so that we don't have all these issues way down the road is to, is to you know, number one, have a baby naturally because whenever a mother has a baby naturally, her birth canal floods with all the healthy type of bacteria in her gut. That's like an immediate protective coating to the baby as it enters into the new world. The other thing is when you breastfeed a child, you continue to fortify all the healthy bacteria and give them all the nutrients they need to now get a foothold inside of that baby's digestive tract and its microbiome to form the right balances in the right cultures. So C-sections, you don't get any of that healthy bacteria passed on. And then how many kids are also formula fed today? They don't get any of that nourishment for the right bacteria. That's, so that's why we're seeing so many young kids today having GI issues and young people developing autoimmune diseases and asthma and allergies and food sensitivities and on and on and on. So uh, look, I hope this was helpful. If you're experiencing any one of those issues and you wanna get this properly investigated, this is much different than having a colonoscopy. It's much better than any previous test I've ever come across in regards to truly evalu evaluating what is going on in your stool, what's going on in your digestive tract right now, and then what, how can we address that? What do we need to knock out? What do we need to support from a healthy bacteria standpoint? So if you have any questions, please feel free to email us through our website here. Um, contact me on our contact page or you know, contact us via Messenger on Facebook too. So I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.